Children learn most science when the lesson is relevant, stimulating and well organised. You can achieve this by planning the lesson carefully beforehand. This video looks at ways of organising science lessons and how you choose which method to use. There are lots of different types of organisations. Each has advantages and disadvantages. The decision you make affects how you set out the classroom and equipment before the lesson starts, how and what you tell the children to do, and how you make sure they're all learning effectively. Planning your science lesson, your first step will be to decide what ideas and skills you want the children to learn. The classroom organisation should then be chosen to optimise this learning, but your options will be limited by what equipment and materials you want to use, the children's previous knowledge and experience, and the time available. So, what are the possibilities? We're going to look at a variety of organisations. Some involve the whole class, others involve small groups of children. The term whole class teaching or whole class activities can mean many things, including introducing a topic to the whole class, the whole class doing the same practical activity, sharing science books with the whole class, demonstrations for the whole class, and drawing the lesson together with the whole class. Small group may also be used to describe a variety of activities. Groups of children doing different practical science tasks. A circus of different activities that groups of children move around. And one group only doing science, while the rest of the class do a separate activity. For each method, you need to plan the organisation of equipment, how the children will learn, and your role in the activity. Once you've decided what ideas you're going to teach, you need to consider the following things. How will you make the lesson relevant and stimulating? What do you need to do before the lesson? What equipment have you got? How will you organise it? What experience do the children already have of group work? How will you use the time available? And what are you going to do in the lesson? What have I got here? Victoria. I've got a teddy, yes. It's my best Whole classwork is relatively easy yes, to control. Is it a good idea to go to the park with what he's wearing? What's he wearing at the moment? The introduction is a chance to capture the children's interest by putting the activity into a familiar context. This shows them that science is relevant in everybody's life. What will Teddy need to wear to go to the park? Oliver. A jacket. Megan. A hat. A hat to keep his head warm. You need to tell the children the aim of the lesson and the task they're going to carry out. This teacher wants the children to think about the properties of different fabrics. What all these materials are here in front of you, I want you to have a guess and tell me which one you think will make the best coat for Teddy. Now then. Alice. I think that um, brown one. This brown one here, you think. Why do you think that? <coughs> because it looks um, thick and it looks really warm. Quite warm, good. Use open questions so all the children can respond fully. Try to find out what they already know. What else does Teddy's coat need to be apart from Make sure that every child takes part and that everyone listens to the new ideas. Yeah. How do you think we're going to find out which will make the warmest coat for Teddy? How could we find out? Oliver. We could put them through a test. A whole class introduction has a number of advantages. It's easier to control the children when they're all together and you can all share ideas. Here's a clue. You can show them all what to do at the same time. The disadvantage is that it's difficult to assess and cater for individual needs in this way. Some of the children may need more time to understand the ideas. Others may be able to learn far more than their peers. Yeah, I think that's 
making sure it's fair. Yeah. Yeah, good. By providing practical work for all the children after the introduction, there's a chance for them to work at their own level. Suitable practical work excites children's interest and helps them to learn. If all the children are doing the same task, it's fairly easy to monitor their learning and you only have one type of equipment to organise. The aim of this part of the lesson is to help children carry out scientific tests. They're finding out which is the best fabric to keep a teddy warm. Make sure all the children are working at an appropriate level. Walk round the class helping, questioning and promoting new ideas. Yours has gone up higher than it was in the beginning. But what if there isn't enough equipment for everyone to do the same task together? Or you want the class to investigate a number of different aspects between them? One alternative approach is for small groups to do different activities and then to share their knowledge at the end. You can choose the membership of the groups depending on what you want to teach and the children's experience of group work. In this lesson, the teacher wants the children to learn science investigation skills. Each group is going to do a different experiment testing the properties of paper, strength, water resistance and suitability for writing on, but the basic investigation skills are the same. The groups need different equipment, so you'll need to prepare carefully. All equipment must be out and ready before the lesson starts. So what are you going to write down in your chart? These people are going to put... How many rubs? That's easy, they're just going to write a number. These people are going to put... How many drops? So they're just going to write a number. What are these people? Like? In your introduction, you need to tell each group what to do whilst keeping the attention and enthusiasm of the whole class. Any problems, anybody, before I send you off to your tables? Emily? Is it not which table you Well, I'm just about to say. Not only do you have to tell them what to do, you also have to arrange for them to move to begin their work. We'll start with the strong people. This table here. Tim, Abby Higgins, Joshua Kimley and Sarah Morgan work at this end of the table. Oliver Robinson, Christopher Milne, Jacqueline and Alexander at the other. Don't talk for a minute whilst I send the rest of the groups off. And Stuart, you work with Sarah, don't you? I think that's what you're the best. Once the children have started, you should move around helping individuals, particularly those who are struggling. And you should be ready to provide extension material for those who've completed their tasks, so they have something useful to do while everyone else finishes. Why do you think what they found out is... Since the children have all done different experiments, you can draw the lesson together by having each group report its findings and ideas to the whole class. Anybody else got another question they'd like to ask? Megan. Um, how hard were they testing on each one? How hard were they in this activity, each child only does one of the three investigations. If you want all the children to do all the activities, but you don't have a lot of equipment and materials, you can move the children through a circus of activities. There are three activities in this circus about sound finding out how vibrations can produce sound and movement, how big and small instruments make different sounds, and how sound travels through different materials. As each group does the tasks in a different order, a circus should only be used when there's no progression between activities. I don't think you're banging loudly enough. That's what I think. Let's see if we can frighten it. This approach is not as easy as it might seem. You need to be sure all the activities you choose can be done in the time available. All the children have to know what they're expected to do in each situation and how. So you need to write on the bottom of this, you need to write up on the bottom of this, that the little instruments have the high voices and the big instruments have the low voices. Right? The teacher should again move around the different activities. 
And, as before, it's a good idea to have a backup activity for children who finish quickly. These children are matching pictures and sounds. One minute, no more sounds. One minute to tidy up your table for the next group who are coming. And to make sure that you've filled in your sheet. And to make sure that you've got your name on it. Each time the groups have completed their activity, you need to move them sensibly to the next. You may need to remind them of what to do. I want you to be having a think about where you're going next. Can you spot the place you're going next? When Sarah's table have tidied up, we'll be ready to move. Is your table tidy, the one you're leaving? Oh, it better be. Off you go round to the next place and sit down. Don't touch anything yet. Just sit down. Look ready. Right, off you go. Let's see what's happening here. As a circus is complicated to plan and carry out successfully, another possibility, if equipment is very limited or if it needs close supervision, is to have just one group of children doing science. Leave your thermometer in it for a minute, that's it. Now you've only got a little bit of hot water, is it still? Very hot. It's still very hot. In this case, the teacher is working with the science group to introduce the use of thermometers, while the rest of the class get on with other work that's already been introduced and explained. This intensive approach enables you to supervise and help children to use delicate or complicated equipment, to concentrate on children who need extra help to develop their knowledge or practical skills, and to assess individual progress. Go down there. Woo! There you go. In this organisation, you should sit in a position that allows you to supervise and continue to help the whole class. Jackie, bring your dictionary, sweetheart. Let's see what you're doing. Bring your book. Bring your book. It's important that both activities are of high quality and value, and you must make sure that you keep track of who's done what. Let's see if we can find Gert in the dictionary. There's Gert. If the children already know how to use the equipment and are clear about what they have to do, they can work independently of the teacher. In this case, the teacher is concentrating on helping the rest of the class with an English task. At the same time, she's keeping an eye on the progress of the children on the computer, and she'll examine their written work later. She'll talk about the activity with the whole class once all the children have had their turn on the computer. It looked like egg. Right, what happened to the butter then? We're not using the right words, are we? What happened to the butter? It looked like egg and it went all sloppy. What, what happened to it, Stuart? It melted. It had melted. Good. Sometimes the children can't do the experiment themselves. Materials may be very limited or equipment too complicated for them to use. How do you know it's really hot water? Put your hands up then. There may be dangers involved. The children might be at risk or they might damage delicate equipment or hurt living animals. What might you get from that? But burn your finger, so that's why I'm doing it, isn't it? Let's put it in then. Shh, don't call that. In these cases, the teacher can demonstrate the activity while all the children watch. Alice, anything else you can think of that will melt like this? Ice, yes, good girl. If we'd got an ice cube, we could put an ice cube in Whole there. class demonstrations should be rare. Although this organisation seems to be easy for the teacher, it's difficult to involve all the children. Primary children need as many hands-on experiences as possible because they cater far better for individual needs. <laughs> Whilst practical work is very important, children need to learn that scientists work in other ways. Some of their research is done by reading. 
So children need to learn how to make good use of non-fiction science books. All right. Should we get someone to choose something? Vicky, have a look. Let's see what we can choose. Sound waves. Sound waves. Page six. Non-fiction and fiction should be presented in different ways. You don't need to read all of a non-fiction work. Here, the teacher's encouraging children to find data by using the contents page. Then she's reading and talking about one page only. Word, I'm after one word. Ends with la. Victoria. A letter. Right. She's writing a letter, isn't she? It's a great big long letter. Let's read it. Some fiction books can prompt scientific discussion. The teacher is using this book to put the children's investigation into an everyday context and to prompt talk about environmental issues. The world is precious, every bit. Please don't make a mess of it. And she wrote her name. Sharing a book can be a good way of introducing a science lesson or of drawing it to a close. It's not paper. Mm. It could like it's sort of like that plastic. I thought that like that would be waterproof and like that would be the thickest and that would go on for the. Like, so I think it's maybe because it's not actually made out of paper that it was yeah. the strongest. After all science activities, you should help the children to explain what they've done and what they found out. Sorry, what was it that was making the rice move? What was the word that we said before? This is usually best done with the whole class. Is it called when the rice was moving? Um, vibration. Well done, Chris. Yes, it was vibration. Why do, how do you know it was the best one? Because, like... How do they know it was the it best was... one? Somebody help them out. How do they know? Megan? They're only lost. Talking to you and their classmates helps and motivates the children to clarify their ideas. Right, so it lost the least amount of heat, didn't it? So it must have kept... It also gives you a chance to assess their learning and to develop their ideas further. OK, then. Go sit down again, then. Well done. Okay. Each type of organisation has advantages and disadvantages. Most teachers use several methods. The one you choose will depend on what you want the children to learn, what experience the class already has of group work, and the time, equipment and materials available. Once you've chosen an organisation, you should think about what you need to collect and set out, the way you'll introduce the work, what the children will do during the lesson, what you'll do to monitor and assess their learning, how you'll help children of different abilities and how you'll conclude the lesson. What we need is that Although this seems a lot to plan for each lesson, all your efforts will pay off. Stimulating, well-organised lessons focused at the right level, minimise discipline problems, optimise children's learning and make science enjoyable for the children and their teachers.